a few things to help our meeting go more quickly and make sure folks are, feel comfortable uh, participating. The town meeting is governed by state law and Robert's rule of, rules of order. I'll remind you of a few of these uh, rules that General Roberts laid out for us. You may speak twice on an article, once when recognized by the, once recognized by the moderator, and you may speak a second time after everyone who has, uh, would like to speak has spoken once. Uh, you may speak for five minutes. Um, if the assembly will allow it, it will allow you to go a little bit over, but I will stop you in five minutes. Um, please stand when recognized and state your name so that the um, uh, town clerks can uh, get your name down for the, for the notes. Um, and do we have uh, microphone runners? We don't really. We have two microphones up here. Anyone? Dying to be a microphone runner. Or passion for microphone running, anyone? Robert. Thank you, Robert. Robert? Oh, thank you, Robert. Uh, you know how those work. Uh, uh, the business we're going to conduct tonight is on pages 10 to 12 of your town report. Um, for non-election articles, we'll attempt to decide by voice vote as much as we can. We have a, a large group tonight. We'll do the best we can. If, we, if I can't decide, if I can't determine from a voice vote, we'll have a division of the House ask you to raise your hand, and we'll have the um, uh, Civil Board of Authorities count hands for the yeas and nays. Um, and I remind you that you can, at any point, ask for a division of the House or seven voters can ask for a paper ballot, if you would like. Um, remind you that debate can be cut off by calling the question, but you've got to be recognized before, uh, before you can do that. Um, speeches must be confined, confined to the merit of the question, and no one will be allowed to attack, make, make personal attacks. Only warned articles may be considered, but any action cannot be taken under the article of other business. The role of the moderator is to help you accomplish your business tonight um, expeditiously and fairly. Um, please raise your hand. I'll try to recognize you in the order you raise your hand. I'll try to call it all of you by name, but um, won't recognize many folks, and my eyes are failing me, so I may just point to you in the, in the blue coat, or the, and uh, you'll know who you are. Um, the moderator's ruling, I want to remind you, can be appealed. If I rule on something and you don't like it, um, you may um, stand up and shout out uh, like to appeal the moderator's ruling, and we'll go through the process of how you do that. Um, and then it will be the will of the assembly whether my, my ruling will, will stand or will be sustained. Um, if you think I'm violating Robert's rules of order of the, of the process, please call out point of order, and we'll talk about it. And, um, in most cases, when it's happened in the past, it's been very helpful uh, when I've gone astray. Um, the moderator can use unanimous, unanimous consent, and that is when uh, we want to sort of bypass Robert's rules of order. Um, things where you might say that there are no, no objections, we will do this or do that. And one way we typically use that is when we um, uh, talk about non-voters being able to speak. Um, and we'll go through that. Where I might say, if there are no objections, we'll let non-voters speak. Um, so that's one example. If ever I say, if there are no objections, that means I'm sort of trying to speed us up through a process. And if anyone questions that, you can just say, I object. Let's go through the process. Or, or what are we skipping over? And usually it's skipping over uh, a second or, um, or a vote that I think is going to be uh, pretty clear in terms of maybe letting someone have someone speak that's not a, not a resident, or excuse me, not a um, voter. Um, so at this time, can I ask those that are um, not voters of Rochester to just identify yourself, please raise your hand. Great, welcome, thank you, glad you're here. Um, our um, custom in Rochester is to allow uh, visitors to, to speak, to, to say their piece. Often it's related to issues that, to adjoining towns where we, we share interests. So um, if, if 
voters by Robert's rule, non-voters by Robert's rules cannot speak, but if we can suspend the rules, if there are no objections, we'll allow our visitors to speak tonight. Any objections? Thank you. But I will remind the non-voters that in the heat of the moment, don't raise your hand for a, for a uh, division of the House or call out on a vote. Um, you still can't vote, even though we'll let you speak. Um, we want to um, have some opening remarks from um, our um, representative, St. Thomas. So um, I brought um, a written report that I think must be found out on the table in the front. And uh, Bill Doyle is still doing his poll. So I encourage you to do those. There's a stack of those as well. And there's a box for the polls on the front of the table. So the legislature is, um, is halfway through. Uh, Friday was uh, what we call crossover deadline. And this is the second year of the biennium. So anything that hasn't come out of committee by, didn't come out of committee by last Friday is um, in all probability dead for the rest of this biennium. There are occasional exceptions to that, but for the most part, if there were, if there were bills um, that you heard about that you thought were really stupid and, um, and they're still in committee, you can assume that they'll stay there. Um, but we had quite a flurry of activity last week uh, because it was because it was crossover. So what crossover means is is that bill, house bills have to come out of have to come to the house floor, be ready to come for a vote next week, and Senate bills have to be ready for a vote in the Senate, and then they go to the other body. And as we know, just because a bill passes in the Senate doesn't mean mean it's necessarily going to pass in the House, and probably won't pass in the same form. Uh, we all we like to uh, we like to tinker with things, and we do it a lot. But um, in the flurry last week on the House side, I counted about 40 bills that came out of committee. Uh, those were things that people had been working on for a long time that had probably some, um, some tricky parts or some disagreements. Uh, we, tend to, we tend to do all of the, the unanimous bills early on in the session and save the hard ones for the end. Um, but one of the, one of, and I, I just ran through the, you know, the category of things that there were, and it's quite a range. But I think the one that, would, that I want to talk about for just a second is, um, is it has to do with the economy. What we know is that we have employers all over the state who, don't, who cannot find workers to fill the jobs that they have. We have one of the lowest unemployment rates in the state, but what we have is a gap between the skills that employers need and the skills that workers have. And so one of, one of, the, one of the stack of bills that came out would, um, would set up a work, workforce development system to really look at how we identify uh, where the gaps are um, on the employment side and where the gaps are on the education side. Both, both college, but also all kinds of post-secondary training and, and for people going back to, to learn new skills as the, um, as the, the economy changes. Um, so that's just one of the things. There are a few others that I put, that I wrote about in the in my report, um, where we are on the budget, where we are on taxes, and the effect of the federal tax changes. So I'll leave you to look at that. Um, I'm. This is we're, we are out of session this week, so I'll be in town all week. Please feel free to call me or email me or catch me on the street if you have questions or just want me to know what your position is. I look forward to talking to you. <coughs> Thank you, Sandy. Um, just want to let folks know that Orca Media is here, down here with the um, camera in the front, and they're a nonprofit organization, and their mission is to increase participation in local governments. So they will record um, our meeting tonight, and also uh, record school boards and select board meetings and other meetings, and put them up on their website. Um, if they Google Orca Media, would we, would we find you? Also YouTube. YouTube. Now. Okay. Orcamedia.net. Orcamedia.net. See yourself on TV. Um, over the last couple of few years, I've uh, read a civil invocation that I'd like to share again tonight, but give you a little context 
to it. Um, it spread in many town uh, meetings across the state and originated up in Danville, where um, the town uh, attorney wrote it um, for their town when the um, issue over church and state heated up and local clergy and others were uncomfortable with the tension there. But they wanted to bring sort of some thought to a, to a higher purpose to the meetings. Um, so he wrote this, and um, I'll continue to share until I get feedback otherwise each year. Uh, welcome to the Rochester Town Meeting. We come together in civil assembly as a community in a tradition that is older than the state itself. We come together to make decisions about our community. As we deliberate, let us advocate for our positions, but not at the expense of others. Let us remember that there is an immense gap between saying, I am right, and saying, I believe I am right. And, our, and that our neighbors with whom we disagree are good people, with hopes and dreams as true and as high as ours. And let us always remember that in the end, caring for each other is the, in this community is of far greater importance than any difference we may have. With that, we'll move to the business of the evening. Uh, that is your town report, um, starting on page 10. Notice to the legal voter, can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Holler out if I drift away from the microphone and you can't hear me. Notice to the legal voters of Rochester, Vermont, annual town meeting to be held Monday night, March 5th, 2018, 7 p.m. The legal voters of the town of Rochester, County of Windsor, State of Vermont, are hereby notified and warned to meet in the Rochester High School Auditorium in said town, Monday, March 5th, 2018, at 7 p.m., to transact the following business. Now, I should read the entire warning, but if there are no objections, I will not go through the entire warning, but we'll read each article as we come to it. Okay, first article, um, to elect, article one, to elect a town moderator for the ensuing year. <coughs> Nominations? I'd like to nominate Dan McKinley. Second. Dan McKinley's been nominated and seconded. Any other nominations? Move nominations closed. Nominations, move nominations closed. If no objections, we'll close nominations. And ask the clerk to cast one ballot for Dan McKinley for town moderator. <laughs> Article two, to elect all town officers as required by law. Point of order, moderator? Pardon me? Point of order? Yeah. Um, at this time, I would like to move to amend. Uh, would you like me to have a microphone? It's is that? Yeah. 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 What, what's the point of order? Can you tell me what your uh, what the process? Are, well, good. Uh, Mason uh, Wade. This is about uh, to move an amendment to Article Two. Article Two amendment. Uh, let me read the read the article first. Okay. And uh, yeah, then I'll hear 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 your. So that wouldn't be a point of order. You would be uh, making a, a motion to amend an article. So let me read the article first. Um, I'm going to read the whole thing, and then we'll go through through them one one line at a time. To elect all town officers as required by law: one, select board member, three-year term; two, lister, three-year term; three, collector of delinquent taxes, one-year term; four, library trustee, five-year term; five, trustee of public funds, three-year term; six, cemetery commissioner, five-year term; seven, grand jury, one-year term. Eight, second grand juror, one year term. Nine, uh, agreement to uh, agent to prosecute and defend sweet suits. And ten, agent to convey real estate. Uh, we'll um, have a uh, motion to move uh, number one to select board. We'll move that article. Mark? I'll move the article. Second. 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 Uh, go ahead, Mason, recognize you. Oh, thank you. Uh, I move to amend Article 2 with a three-third yes floor vote in accordance to Vermont Statute Title 17-2646, number 10, to eliminate one of the two grand juror positions. Why? 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 Why?
this is the stuff we're going to go through these one by one line at a time. I, I, I'm amending the article. Um, and before you start the article. Yeah, I guess uh, that's good. We do that because we're not dividing the question. We're taking it all at once, but in an orderly fashion. Um, so uh, I don't object to, to that. Uh, so there is a motion on the floor to amend the article to um, not elect a second grand juror. Correct. With a two-thirds floor vote in accordance to Vermont statutes. Okay. So we got to vote so we want to, um, so that's the, uh, yeah, we need a second for that, that motion, and then we'll open it for discussion. We have a second for that. Sure, I'll second Okay, thank you. And then we can uh, open it up for discussion and understand why. So the uh, person who makes uh, the motion can speak first. Uh, Mason, would you like to explain your thought process? I'm happy to do that, but I don't have to as the first person to speak. No, no, you don't. You don't. It's a yes. privilege to be the first to speak. Right. If you well, uh, folks, if you look on page 19, who's who in your county board, uh, towards the bottom, and you can have an understanding of what the grand juror position is. Um, and in our statutes, we, we uh, function under state statutes because we're not a chartered community. A chartered community can actually make different decisions. But the statute says one or more grand jurors. Um, and what's, so we have the right to just have one grand juror. The whole concept of grand juror is obsolete and, and uh, we need to eliminate it. And actually the state house is probably going to deal with it, who knows, 10 years. But we can be giving them yeah, uh, a signal, like, let's get rid of these laws that are not good for us. Uh, basically, uh, it's not a great idea to elect somebody to this position in red. Um, uh, and because we're moving toward a different type of law enforcement. And if you go to page 52, the constable's report, Mark. Uh, has done a very nice job of sharing with us uh, at the bottom of the page that uh, it's time to buckle up because taxes are going to get increased in law enforcement. Uh, so it's just time to step into the future and if we have obsolete laws, let's, let's get rid of them. I have a discussion. Speak to that. So, so this is, um, can you hear me out there? No. Get closer. Get closer. Yeah. Closer. Eat the mic. Okay. So this is a one of the five petitions that Mason presented um, for this meeting, and we responded to this back on the select board meeting of January 22nd. And with the legal advice that under um, section 17 VSA 25 to 46 10. Um, this is this is not something that the, the town has authority to to eliminate at a, in the town. This is a, something that is you, you say that they they're thinking about eliminating this, but it is they've not eliminated this, and this is um, we, we've been determined that this was not warned to put on the meeting because it, we, we legally cannot eliminate that position. Mason, wait till you recognize. Other folks have a chance to uh, talk, and then you'll have a chance for your second time. Any other discussion? Go ahead. John. Uh, uh, do, oh, sure. <laughs> uh, does, just for a little clarity here, does the position have any function in the town right now? I mean, are we talking about something that maybe we should have one if something odd comes up? It is not something that has been pressed into service as a position in, in, in my recent memory. 
or deeper memory. Maybe Sandy Haas would have some insight to know. Um, but that regardless of that, it is part of um, our direction of you know, who to elect or what offices to fill as part of the town government, town structure. And it's not a paid position? It's, no, it's not a paid position. It's a, an appointed position. Or is it elected? It's elected. It's elected. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other discussion? Chris, no microphone, big mouth. So I just have a question, like it says, second grand juror. So that leads me to believe that we have another grand juror, yeah. that, correct? Yeah, okay, that. thank you. So we still have one. Still have one. Anyone else before I gave uh, Mason the second chance? Go ahead, uh, Mason. Well, do, do you have the statute in front of you? I don't. I just okay. have the well, reference the word, to the number. The key word here, it states one or more grand jurors. Yes. We have the right, with a two-third floor vote, to go ahead and change the situation. Yeah. Could you explain more the, the reason that the word you is want or. to do that? Okay. Yes. The, we, word is, the word is or. The word is or. Okay. And we can do that. <laughs> or not. Or not. It, this is democracy. This yep. is how we revamp our local government. These are the things we are supposed to be here to take care of as business. And we have obsolete laws. I'm just saying that it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty serious conflict of interest for a person to take on this role if they actually legalize it. We may not want situations where people are holding uh, two or three different offices and holding this. Uh, it's good to reread. Uh, the who's who on that 19. Think about it. what that means if you were the grand juror and you utilized it uh, to your neighbors. Uh, it's just a, it's, let's say, prior to grand jurors, we used to put people on stockades and throw tomatoes at them. So it's just an advancement in our movement forward to proper process. Uh, Susie Smolenhead, I'm going to Okay, right, questions have been called. Um, so if there are uh, any second it. So we need a two-thirds vote to uh, end discussion. All in favor of ending discussion, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say nay. Okay, we're going to close discussion. We'll go to a vote. We are voting on an amendment to Article 1, and the amendment was to elect one grand juror and not the second grand juror uh, for a term of one year. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment, Say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Nay. The nays appear to have it. Uh, the amendment is does not pass. So we go back to the original article. So we're going to go by these one line at a time. First is uh, to elect a select board member. Nominations. Frank. Russell, I nominate Jim Bowen. Second that. Yes. Uh, Dan, could I? Oh, go ahead. I nominate Did you get the name? I'm sorry, I didn't get the name. Pat Hardy. Pat Hardy. Yeah, I'm going to give all the nominees a chance to right. say a word. Okay. Any other nominations? I'd like to nominate Bob Mayor. I'll Any other nominations? We select board for one year. Close nominations? Three. That's three year term. Oh, I'm sorry. Three years. Yeah. Three year term. Thank you. How many years? Three. three. Uh, if there are no other nominations. We'll close nominations. Uh, <coughs> I would like to say something. Yeah. So I'm going to give the, um, each of those folks an opportunity to say something if they would like. Jim? 
I'm going to decline the nomination. Um, for those of you that know me, know that family is pretty important to me. Um, I, I do love my two girls, my wife and daughter. And uh, soon enough, I'm not going to be able to say my two girls. Uh, Bowen daughter number two was on the way this summer. Thank you. Pat or Robert, care to say anything about your fantasy? Hello. Uh, well, I've been a select board member before. It's not an easy position for anyone. It's not one I enjoy or consider it as a duty. So some people think that's odd. It's very sane. Uh, it's uh, 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 difficult. Very often people don't like um, being told no. Um, so you're often put at odds with. Uh, members of the community. Um, it's also, we have, you know, there's the difficult problem of balancing what the, the uh, uh, taxpayers can afford versus keeping up your infrastructure and, you know, the necessary expenses. This is always the eternal tension. I'll try to get it right, but it's, it's difficult. So, um, that's about it. Good evening, I'm Pat Harvey. If you don't always know who I am. I moved to Rochester in 1986, raised my two children here, where they continue to live today, along with two grandchildren. I married Dave, Marvin's son. And we operate four businesses all dependent on this valley. My real estate firm, Dave's Excavate, and together we share duties for Hawthorne Property Management and the hardware store. You might say I am deep seated in Rochester and this <coughs> I have participated in town government as a listener, an auditor, an agent to convey real estate, going back more than a decade. I feel I have the time, the ambition, and enough knowledge to represent the voters of Rochester and to work with the current board members and move forward on the current issues at hand and address upcoming issues which we know will include discussions surrounding real estate transactions, specifically this wonderful school campus buildings. Citizens band together to protect a small recreational area tells me that we must expand into more recreational areas wherever possible to ensure our residents and our visitors enjoy our natural assets even more. This is my time to serve my community in its highest capacity, and I plan on always rising to each occasion with open ears, eyes, and mind. Thank you. <clears throat> Small area, 
let's open that up and give them a lot more area to recreate. I'd like to know the position of the two candidates on the expansion of the select board from three to five. Yeah, so I think we're getting into some of the other articles here. That we no, the position on working with not just two people, but with four other people. Yeah, I don't know why we, we could ask about Pine Gap and not about some other issue. My ruling is to, um, to let the question go and let it be asked. Uh, you know how you can appeal my ruling if you want. Go ahead, Robert. Since, since we're... Uh, since the uh, candidates were uh, asked, I, I don't, I'm a bit ambivalent on the, the question of uh, three versus five. There are particular problems with having only three, uh, three people. Uh, two people is a quorum, so by the open meeting law, you can't, outside of uh, open meeting, discuss anything with your fellow, fellow uh, select board members. Um, this creates some problems in, in continuity, but it also protects against certain types of, uh, of um, you know, that certain problems that the open meeting law was designed to um, uh, protect against. Uh, going up to five um, uh, makes it a little more complicated. I don't see any or overwhelming objections to that. But again, and then the. On the flip side, you, you have a lot more discussion that's out of meeting uh, with five. So there's pluses and minuses to both. Pat, would you like to address that? I think I would just like to leave that up to the voters to decide. Um, after, after the decision, we can discuss the inner you know, workings of the select board and what it benefits and it doesn't benefit the town. But it's, it's definitely a decision that the voters should make first. Uh, Ethan, and then Mason, and then Frank. Uh, I'd just like to ask you if um, uh, you'd have any problem recusing yourselves from articles that come before the select board because you have business in the town. Of course. My father-in-law, Marvin Harvey, did that many times. Mason, <laughs> uh, Mark, actually, is one individual in this community, uh, I want to say it, a guru in democracy. Uh, I have a meeting for you. I, now, now, the next uh, uh, section we're going to be dealing with is the Lister. Will you be not running for Lister? I haven't been Lister. Okay, so you're not in the elected not positions. Anymore. Not anymore. So this is just a one position that you're looking at. That's an elected position? You, do you have a conflict with that at all? If we could have the oh, assembly right. hearing the answers. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. According to the state, there is no conflict with the elected position. Yeah. Yeah. And ask one question. Okay, there are no other questions. We'll move to a paper ballot. So, uh, how do you, how, what's the best way for them to proceed? <laughs> to come across the front? Slowly. And then, <laughs> so come down the. Uh,
153 ballots were counted, um, and only 152 check marks were made on the um, voter list. So we missed someone's check mark, um, but the results of the uh, results of, of the ballot are 89 for Pat and 64 for Robert. So Pat is elected the select board. I'd like to um, thank Jim Bowen for his service yeah. and congratulate him on his Congratulations, Pat and Robert. Thank you for offering to, to serve. Appreciate that. Article one still. <laughs> no, a, Article uh, two. Oh, Article two. Sorry. <laughs> Article two um, to elect a lister for a three-year term. And this was a um, uh, uh, Josh Hanford's term. Uh, Push that out for uh, nomination. Or Lister. Dick? I'd like to nominate Jessica Arsenal. I'll second that. I'll second that. Um, I'd like to remind folks if um, you don't have to wait, if you decide you don't want to accept that nomination, you can shout that out right away. Um, don't need to end, uh, wait till the end of, of nominations. Um, I probably didn't give Jim a chance to do that before uh, we moved on to other nominations. So uh, shout out if you're not going to accept that nomination right off and we can look for, for others. Any other nominations for Lister? Jess Arsenal has been nominated. I move the nominations close. Seconded. Seconded. Okay. Nominations close. We have one candidate, Jess Arsenal, for Lister for a three year term. Um, no other nominations, so I'll instruct the clerk to cast one vote for Jessica Arsenal as a lister. Thank you, Jessica, for your in the, in the house. Thank you. <laughs> to elect a collector of delinquent taxes for a one year term. I nominate Becky Klein. Becky Klein's been nominated. Second. Seconded. Other nominations? Nominations move, nominations close. Anybody want to second that? Second. Second it. Nominations closed. Um, all in favor? All in favor? Oh, Becky ah. Klein. Yeah. yeah, that's good. All in favor of Becky Klein? No. Oh. Well done, yeah, I should because nominations are required to thirds vote. Um, if there are no objections, we'll close nominations. Um, and ask the uh, clerk to cast. One ballot for Becky Pine for collector of delinquent taxes. To elect a library trustee for a five year term. Nominations? I nominate um, uh, Mrs. LaBeja, please. Yola LaBeja. Yola LaBeja has been nominated. Any other nominations? Uh, no objections. We'll close nominations. And ask the clerk to cast one ballot for Yola LaVeja for a trustee of, or excuse me, library trustee for a five year term. To elect a trustee of public funds for a three year term. Nominations? I nominate Barbara DeHart. Uh, Barbara DeHart has been nominated. Seconded. Seconded. Um, do I hear Mike Carvey? Someone? Yeah, Mike Carvey. I think he's already. I don't know what the sequence of. Um, um, we're only electing one for a five-year term. Is, is Mike already? Three-year term. Three-year term. Three -year term. <laughs> um, Isn't he already on? Mike, Mike is on. Mike, are you? Uh, no, it's Barb. Barb's this is Barb. This is Barb's end of Barb's term, right? right so this is Barb's seat. Um, so we so Barb's been nominated. Mike's still on. Okay. Any other nominations? <coughs> No objections, we'll close nominations. So I'll ask the clerk to cast one ballot for Barbara Hart for trustee of public funds for a three-year term. 
to elect a seminary commissioner for a five-year term. This was Tom Paquette's seat. Right, Tom Paquette. Tom Paquette's been nominated Second. again and seconded for maybe the 30th year in a row, I'm not sure. <laughs> Tom, do you accept that nomination, Tom? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Any other nomina nominations? No objections, we'll close nominations. And I ask the clerk to cast one ballot for Tom Paquette for a cemetery commissioner for a five year term. Who elected a grand juror for a one year term? Nominations? Nominate Barbara Hart. Barbara Hart's been nominated. Order. Yes. Um, uh, this chart from the state is incompatible for an elected uh, official to uh, uh, be a uh, grand juror. We just elected Barb for a trustee, so that's not a compatible in, uh, situation. There are there are offices that are incompatible by state law. Yes. Um, I don't know like exactly to what they are. What's that Would list? Like me to uh, bring it to you. Or? Anyone else? Does uh, town clerk know anything about the compatibility? No. That doesn't mean we're getting an answer. Yeah. <laughs> Put you on the spot now. I'm not seeing it. Thanks, yes. show, me, show me where you're at. Top row, it says elected offices. Yep. Okay. Take the grand juror, move your, move your finger to under elected offices, and it says no. Um, so this is a matrix, right? You go down and then over. So trustee of public funds, auditor, <coughs> no. Grand juror. You see grand juror across the top? Grand juror. I don't. Okay, so it's a matrix that has the, uh, the positions down the side and across the top. Um, one of the uh, across the top is election official and candidate um, voted by Australian ballot. Um, but um, it doesn't say elected official, it's the election official, like the town clerk. So the town clerk couldn't be um, the elector of the Lincoln, Texas. From, uh, I could be, the but rule. I couldn't be a grand jury. Grand jury, right. 
Um, so I'm going to rule that uh, she can hold both of those offices. Okay, so we are on um, Grand Jury, right? For their one year term. And Barb Hart has been nominated. Second. Seconded. No other nominations? No objections? I'll close nominations. No objections. And ask the clerk to cast one ballot for Barb Hart for Grand Jury for one year term. To elect a Second grand juror for a one year term. Nominations? Ms. Barb. Uh, Sandy Haas. Sandy Haas has been nominated. Second. And seconded by Judy Jensen. Any other nominations? Hearing none. No objections will close nominations. And ask the clerk to cast one ballot for Sandy Haas for second juror. Uh, second grand juror for one year term. To elect an agent to prosecute and defend suits, a one year term. Nominations? Nominate Bill Matthews. Bill Matthews has been nominated. Any other nominations? No objections, we'll close nominations. Nominations closed and ask the clerk to cast one ballot for Bill Matthews for agent to prosecute and defend suits for a one year term. And lastly, under this article, agents who convey real estate, one year term. Nominations? John? I nominate Pat Hart. Pat Hart has been nominated. Seconded. Seconded by Jessica Arsenal. Right. Any other nominations? No objections, we'll close nominations. Nominations close and ask the uh, clerk to Yes, one ballot for um, Barb Harvey. Who, uh, for Pat Harvey, sorry. <laughs> uh, for agents to convey real estate for a one year term. Moving on to Article 3. Shall the town vote to select or to, to elect two additional select board members, each to a term of one year in accordance with statute 17 VSA 2650 subsection B 1A. I would like to move that. Judy moved it. Can you second that? Okay. And second. <clears throat> Discussion on this article. Judy. I'm, I'm interested in how the members who are I'm interested in the, how members who are serving feel about having more people serve with them. I've never served on that board. I've served on other boards, but um, I'd just like to know what they think about having more people. Would you like to hear from each of them? Or? You want to start, Jim, yeah. since you're leaving? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, certainly, there'd be pluses to either. Um, some negatives too. I think uh, we've, and I'll speak for Robert too, when he served, uh, at times getting the three of us together took some flexibility in scheduling. Um, I could see that being very difficult to get five people all together at the same time. Um, I don't know, that's, you could look at it a lot of different ways. It's hard to say. Um, a three-member board, I think we've worked well together. And I think a three-member board would, would continue to serve the town well. If uh, we were to go to a five-member board, I would hope that the, the members that did decide to run would be committed and would not be uh, have any personal interest that they're looking out for and, and look for the best interest of the town and I'm not sure that tonight that's really what's taking place. Um, I don't know. You want to say anything? I would agree with Jim. Uh, my, my feelings are virtually the same. I can go either way. Uh, I, I 
think I'm slightly erring on keeping it the way it is, but again, it's tough to say. It's all about the people. So when this first came up, Joanne reached out to other towns that have five member boards to ask what their experience has been, what their what input they could have. And there's no question that with five people, there's more people to work if that is their intention, is to help and work. But the other comment was that the meetings end up being longer because there's more people that have something to say. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but uh, the volume of meetings that we end up partaking in, uh, it, it seems to grow every year. And I, I'm, I'm inclined to keep it a three-person board, but I, there could be benefits, like Jim said, to, to both ways. What I'm interested, actually, is I would, I would like to hear from the person who sponsored this, this um, article and what their intent and what their feelings are, why this is something they would like to see happen in the town, if that, if that you'd like to speak on that. Was that Mason, was that your? I guess. Uh, do thank you for using the word sponsor, because this was a process of democracy to uh, put a petition of article together. Uh, I did sponsor it, but it was signed by 50 plus residents, and probably a few of them are here. And this is their petition of article. So for me personally, I have more faith in democracy with a five-member board than a three. That's my feeling, but I sure hope that those who uh, sign the petition will speak up tonight. Thank you. Susie, and lastly, Bruce. Hi, Susie Small. Um, I'm one of the people that signed that petition, and the way uh, I was approached was that why not sign this petition because it would at least allow us to have the discussion. I did not sign this petition with the express purpose of saying that it would be my preference to have five people on this board. I think it's important that that that's be clarified because I think that many, I have spoken with other people in the community regarding this and other petitions, that their intent in signing the petition was merely to allow the process of having a discussion. It was not a commitment to a particular point of view. If anyone wanted to grab the second microphone, you could save Robert some steps. <laughs> My name is Leslie Strauss, and I suggest that you vote no. Robert uh, brought up, which I was going to bring up, that um, a quorum is two. And the select board members that I have known not in this town respect those uh, issues. They, you know, they don't uh, meet, have coffee, and decide issues for the town um, as a two-member team. Um, a five-member team allows for two people to meet, have coffee, decide an issue for town, maybe sway a third member. It means you can have collusion. And I think we're a tiny town. It's very difficult to get three. You could get people who want to get on the board for a single issue. I say vote no. I'm Bruce Flewelli. I've been in board and involved with boards, committee, working group, task force, you name it, for my entire adult life. And they've ranged in numbers from three to 20 or more. And it's been my experience that the larger the group, the more difficult it is to come to some kind of a sensible conclusion. Uh, issues can get dragged on and on and on and never reach a conclusion. And the other thing is, I think if you go to a five-member board, 
you can increase the number by two thirds. Now, I don't believe the population of Rochester has increased by two thirds in the last year or so. So I'm urging all of you to vote with me and vote this article now. I'm Matilda Wallen, um, and the first thing I have to say is thank you to the board because my hat's off to you for your professional um, behavior and your, your, your activities. You've done a really good job, in my opinion. And uh, my, my daddy used to say, if it ain't broke, don't break it. <laughs> so, leave it be. Discussion. Can we move the question? We can stop discussion with a, a two-thirds vote to stop discussion. So the question's been called. Um, so all those in favor of stopping discussion, say aye. Aye. For those who like discussion to continue, say nay. Okay, so we've ended discussion. We'll go to a vote. Article 3, shall the town vote to elect two additional select board members, each to a one-year term in accordance with Vermont State Statute 172650B1A. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say nay. Nay. The article does not pass. Article 4 was to elect two select board members if Article 3 had passed, so we will pass over Article 4. Article 5, to hear and act on the report of the auditors. Is there anyone, is there an auditor who wants to uh, uh, have a second? Hmm? So outside auditors. Outside auditors. Okay. So, there, so no discussion. Yeah. Okay. Um, all those in favor of accepting the auditor's report, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Yeah, we accept. This is one of those articles that never really does anything but we do it every year. Um, so here it acts on the reports of the town officers, Article 6. Anyone move? Oops, move. Move. I didn't see who. <laughs> okay. Have um, any discussion? The report of the town officers. Okay. Motion to accept the reports. Second. Second. Any further discussion? We'll move to a vote and discussion. If there are no objections. All those in favor of accepting the um, town officer's report, say aye. Aye. Ayes opposed, say nay. Ayes have. The report are accepted. Article 7, will the voters agree to pay all the taxes for fiscal year July 1, 2018 to June 30, 2019 to the town treasurer as provided by law? Okay, then move that and second it. Move. And a second from Alina. Any discussion? No discussion? Close discussion, move to, to a vote. <coughs> Will the voters agree to pay all taxes for fiscal year July 1, 2018 to June 30, 2019 to the town treasurer as provided by law? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Let's close, say nay. I said it, Article 7 passes. <coughs> Article 8, will the voters vote to continue the quarterly tax payment schedule with payments due August 15, 2018, November 15, 2018, February 5, 2019, and May 15, 2019, due no later than 4 p.m. on each voted due date. Postmarks have not considered timely. <coughs> Someone would like to move that? So moved. Moved. And seconded. Okay. 
Any discussion? Any other discussion? Close discussion. Move to a vote. All in favor of uh, voters' vote to continue the quarterly tax payment schedule with payments due August 15, 2018, November 15, 2018, February 15, 2019, and May 15, 2019, no later than 4 p.m. on each so. Tuesday. Most marks are not considered timely payment. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Eyes had it. Article 8 passes. Article 9, when the voters approve a budget of $1,061,941 to meet the expenses and liabilities of the town of Rochester with $703,899 to be raised from property taxes. So moved. Moved by David. Second. Seconded by Ethan. Discussion? Hearing none, we'll close discussion. Yeah. I have a question. Ah, okay. Right. Uh, do we not table this until we have voted on uh, Article 10 through? Excuse me. Alvina Harvey, uh, do we not uh, table this motion until we have voted on Article 10 through 14 to have a correct total to be raised by taxes? Those are appropriations. They are all part of that. Can you uh, give a mic to Joanne? The appropriations and the reserve articles are all part of the total budget, so they're already in that number. Okay. But if you wanted to break them out and vote them separately, then we should do that again. So, Joanne, articles 11, 12, 13, and 14. 10 through 14? Yeah. I thought she just said the reserve. Yeah, I, I believe that's, that's right, Dan, that, that through 14. And so when we pass the, the total budget that is up for a vote now, if any of those other articles do not pass, then the budget will be reduced by that much, as far as I understand it. And does that include Article 10? Yeah. Okay. So Article 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 are included in the um, $703,000 figure or the, the $1 million figure? The $1 million figure. $1 million figure. Somebody's got a question out there. Yeah. Any other questions? Just one question. It seems I got a big voice. It seems to me, uh, by comparing this budget with last year's budget, that the total amount went up, but the town, the amount to be raised by taxes went down. If I'm correct. Uh, can a quick explanation be given of how that occurs? quick explanation is the Budget and Finance Committee's spent about 24 meetings, I don't know how many hours, um, working on working on this. And the, the part that went down is basically related to um, different grants we can expect and in, in other monies that come in, in other than tax monies. And, and that, that varies from year to year. Any other discussion or questions on Article 9? <coughs> Hearing none, no objections, we'll close the debate and move to a vote. Will the voters approve a budget of $1,061,941 to meet the expenses and liabilities of the town of Rochester? with $703,899 to be raised from property taxes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Article 9 passes. Article 10, see if the voters will vote to appropriate the following sums as requested by these community agencies. American Red Cross, 250. Capstone Community Action, 300. Central Vermont Council on Aging, 3,000. Clara Martin Center, 
2066, Green Up, Vermont, 100, One Planet After School Program, 1,000, Orange County Parent Child Center, 500, Quintown Senior Center, 9,380, Safe Line Incorporated, 500, Stagecoach, 1,300, Vermont Rural Fire Hybrid, 100, Vermont Nursing, Vermont Nursing Association, 4,800, oh, excuse me, Visiting Nurse Association, 4,800, White River Partnership, 875, White River Valley Ambulance, 71,757, and Women's Safe, 500, for a total of $96,428. Moved move by Ethan, seconded. Julia Jensen, thank you. Discussion? In the back. Uh, the big item, of course, is the um, ambulance. I think it went up by about five percent. Is somebody is our rep for the is our rep for the ambulance service here who can speak to that? Yeah. I'm Vic Lovato. I'm the uh, Rochester rep to the board of uh, White River Valley Angels. I also serve as the president of the board uh, as of October. Uh, there are basically three reasons why the uh, rate went up uh, 5%, as Rob had mentioned. Uh, one is that uh, part of uh, Brookfield, North Brookfield, uh, was seen to be uh, far enough from the ambulance base in Bethel that we couldn't respond as timely as would be desirable. And so an arrangement was worked out with um, uh, uh, Burlington. Barry, thank you. <laughs> it's explained in page 78. Uh, Barry Township uh, to cover that area. And so approximately 600 uh, residents of that area uh, were removed from uh, service responsibility at Burba. It also meant that that number of people and their associated uh, per capita was removed from the budget uh, for this coming year. Uh, second reason is that the actual volume that occurred in 2017 was uh, a good bit below what was budgeted and expected. There were a couple months in particular that uh, fell off for no obvious reason other than uh, perhaps just a statistical fluke. But uh, nevertheless, we had to take that into account in terms of projecting volume for the forthcoming year. Uh, volume is projected on a three-year rolling basis. Uh, we noted that some other ambulance uh, services around the state have also seen uh, less than expected uh, volume. And so, the volume projection, uh, which is where revenue comes from in terms of insurance reimbursement, uh, was lower than what otherwise might be the case. The third thing is on the expenses front. Uh, the per capita had been held steady at $60 uh, per capita for four years. And as with everything else, uh, expenses do go up each year. And uh, we just couldn't uh, hold uh, on many expenses uh, any longer. And so, and even with uh, staff taking a uh, uh, second year of no raises and taking on more responsibility for health insurance expenses, cost of everything goes up whether it's gasoline or what have you. Uh, so uh, those three factors together generated the 5% uh, increase over the past year, which if you think about it in a longer term sense, it's actually about 1% over the past five years. And uh, that's what it takes to run the service. There are two Ambulances on duty 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and uh, they serve 10 pounds. Uh, and again, that's explained uh, fully in the back of the, uh, of the uh, report tonight. So, does that answer your question, Rob? Thanks, Pete. Okay. Question in the back there, Robert. So, I just got a question Pardon. for Vic there. I just wanted, I read something in the paper about. Uh, I think it's Randolph that's thinking about pulling out. <laughs> and, uh, I'm just wondering how that's going to affect things down the road. Well, it's, uh, it's a little uncertain at this point. Uh, <clears throat> we have a dialogue going. Um, we have a dialogue going with Mr. Bellum, the new uh, town manager uh, for Randolph. Um, his interest is to reduce the uh, tax burden of citizens, and certainly have no argument with that. And uh, he's pursuing an interest in finding a way to reduce uh, their uh, contribution towards the ambulance service. Uh, and the two ways that he's described that he would like to explore are one, 
having the town of Randolph start their own ambulance service, or two, threaten to start <laughs> their own ambulance service so that the towns, the other nine towns would contribute more. Um, so, I mean, that, I'm not making this up. This was in the newspaper. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But uh, nevertheless, uh, I do think that uh, uh, if it were to come to pass, if it were to start an ambulance service, uh, I would be very concerned, first of all, about how that service would support uh, Randolph, um, given the kind of parameters he's thinking of. And uh, secondly, financially, it could be a very serious matter for White River, and our ability to continue to provide the services uh, it might cut back the number of ambulances on duty or could increase the response time. There'll be a lot of different things. So it's a little early to describe uh, what the outcome would be, uh, but we'll know more after the town meeting of this week. And the work of board meets uh, two weeks from tonight, we'll uh, figure out where we go from here. But uh, he's talking about next year, it's not for this coming year that I'm about to start. Well, I was just wondering how close that's done. It would be bad. <laughs> Any other discussion? Any questions? The one over here. I just have a question. Do we pay for the meals that the ambulance service needs? And also, do we pay for them using the ambulance to go to the grocery store and buy their food? Uh, they. They buy their own meals. Uh, there are some stock supplies of coffee and the other things in the, in the on call room at the ambulance uh, base. Uh, they have in the past, I know, taken the ambulance to, you know, to run errands for the service. And if they go to stop and pick up food uh, at the, uh, at the uh, grocery store, uh, that might be happening, but uh, you know, I can't say. If they're on duty and going to, and, uh, and in, in service, uh, they'll take the radios with them, and if they get called, they'll go on a call. But um, um, beyond that, I'm not sure. Captain Jenkins, I just want to express my appreciation for the service and for you. We, the demographics of, of this area are definitely older and as is in Vermont in general, and I think it's very important to have this service. And I just want to acknowledge that. And thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? I will close discussion and move to a vote on Article 10 to see if the voters will vote to appropriate the following sums as required um, requested by these community agencies. If no objections, I will not read them. For a total of ninety-six thousand four hundred and eighty-two dollars. Forty-eight dollars. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say nay. Ayes have it. Article ten passes. Article eleven. Will the voters approve an amount? of $60,000 to continue funding the Highway Equipment Reserve Fund. Move it in second, please. Move on you, Jensen. Second. Alina, second. Discussion? Mason. Well, 
backing off and dealing with water quality does not add up to less expensive. Uh, we are facing new regulations from the state to address water quality and erosion and runoff off of roads. When we're, we, I think we've already received a grant to study and analyze our road system and identify the, the hot spots. And being such a hilly terrain, uh, you look at the map of the state and where these projects are going to have the biggest uh, impact financially in Rochester is lit up like a Christmas tree with all the hot spots compared to over in the Champlain Valley, which is ironic because that's where most of the agricultural runoff is going into the water. But so in terms of trying to reduce the costs, a few years ago we we struggled to triple our gravel expense just to try and catch up with the lack of maintenance of the roads and at the same time not have our, our budget you know, go through the roof. So if your question is how do we go about reducing the expense of maintaining a road system and having it be safe in the winter, um, that's, that's, that's a challenge. It's, uh, it's not a question of reducing it so much as is limiting the increase. Do you have anything you want to say on that? Actually, Article 11 is just, <coughs> I, I believe Article 11 is just to deal with the equipment reserve fund amount. Yeah. 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 Uh, John and then All the question and discussion. Uh, all in favor of ending discussion, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say nay. I said it. Um, <laughs> sorry, you think you were that close. That will move to a uh, vote on Article 11. Will the voters approve an amount of $60,000 to continue funding the Highway Equipment Reserve Fund? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Ayes have it. Article 11 passes. Article 12. Will the voters approve an amount of 15000 to continue funding the Fire Department Equipment Reserve Fund? Someone could move and second that. I'll get a little bit and uh, second. Any discussion? Okay. Mason? I'm, I'm curious if we actually should amend it to uh, 30000 And uh, uh, the reason I'm feeling that is because it's a reserve fund, correct? And, and will we have a reserve fund if we vote this in, or has this money already been spent? 15000 It hasn't been spent. Uh, so would you like to answer your question before you make a motion to... Uh, I, well, well I'm going to be a proceed? part of the discussion. I'm just unclear because I was under the impression we may have already spent this money. Yeah. Can, can someone answer that for him and we'll get to his uh, amendment? If he wants to uh, no, we have not already spent this money. We're talking about the budget for next fiscal year, which doesn't start until July 1st. So this would be an addition to the ongoing reserve fund. And in terms of doubling that to $30,000, we worked very hard and scraped pennies everywhere we could to keep the increase of the budget as, as low as possible. It's, if you want to um, amend that to go up to $30,000, that would just add $15,000 to the, the budget number that we passed earlier. So that's your prerogative. Yeah, so Mason, do you, do you want to? No, I, no, no, I was just, okay. oh, so this money wasn't used to purchase the new uh, $65,000 uh, well used truck. If we did buy it, I don't know if we did. It's a you change your truck for $65,000? Have we had enough money to do that? Yes. Without, yes. without using this 15000 Yes, this money is not is nowhere near so, that account so right now. We're talking about so next year. Yeah. I, I don't know. Terry, you went and looked at it. Right. 
What was your decision? <laughs> to buy it. To buy it, okay. <laughs> but yeah, and all, the money is going to be spent. Part of it, not all. Part of it, okay. Part of this 15 will go towards the... Part of the 15 will be going towards the new truck. Okay. The new tanker truck. What's going on? Our used one, I should say. Any other discussion? Uh, right I was just going to say that this truck is not available until August of 2018. Is that correct, Harry? That's correct. So by the time July 1st, 2018 comes around, this will be part of that okay. fiscal year. We'll take what we need to pay the balance of that truck. Any other discussion? Yeah, we moved up. No discussion. Uh, up here, we uh, moved the, we uh, called the question down here, Robert. So, uh, Arlen, if we don't vote to close discussion, I'll come back to you. All in favor of closing the discussion, say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Okay, discussion closed. We move to a vote. Will the voters approve an amount of $15,000 to continue funding the fire department equipment reserve fund? All in favor, say aye. 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 As opposed, say nay. Ayes have it. It's Article 12 and passes. Article 13, will the voters approve an amount of $15,000 to continue funding the town buildings and property reserve fund? Uh, move and second, please. Judy and Alvina, move and second. Thank you. <coughs> Discussion? Yes, Irma. Cassidy, I just have a question. Is the library considered one of the town buildings? Yes. Yes, that, yeah, the library does pull some of the funds out of this when things need to happen there. Okay. Uh, Macy. And for, build, for this particular reserve, uh, will the goal, some of the goals be to save money in relation to our overall uh, electric bill that we, the taxpayers, pay uh, between seven different pages. And this is a home or ground situation. And he was wonderful about dissecting the budget and figuring out such issues. Uh, after totaling up eight different electric bills that we have, we have $24,150. And it seems to me in 2008, the concept of back metering had already existed. That's about a quarter million dollars in electric bills that we paid in the last 10 years. Uh, in, in this reserve, are we thinking about back metering? That's not... Um where this money is directed. This is more for just maintenance, like making sure the, the roofs stop leaking and, and, and just taking care of, basically taking care of the buildings. I'll come back to you, Mason, okay. if everyone else has had a chance, if everyone else wants to. Yeah, Dan. We have made some improvements with our energy bills. It's probably been, it was within the last year we switched all of our street lighting to LED lights. Uh, most of you probably noticed they're much brighter. They're actually on. And um, <laughs> it's reduced our monthly street lighting bill by between two and $250 per month. Uh, Mason, you've been uh, coming to a lot of these meetings, school board meetings and these meetings every year, and um, pointing your finger at us and saying, what have you done and what have you done? So I have to ask you, at what point have you gone out to seek grants and write grants so that the town can secure these? Do you want to respond to this question, Mason? Yeah. No, go ahead. Then John. No. Oh, well, I don't really understand why you're doing that. Because I've served on the school board for three years. I'm an active dissecting the electric bill and saying, hey, we could save a quarter million dollars. A quarter million dollars. What did we, we 
Turn out the lights. Back metering generally would be if we had a way of producing electricity here. Rochester used to produce electricity off of the river. Um, now it would probably be um, solar electric, and if you produce more than you consume, you can get a credit towards you. Go. You don't have a solar. No, we don't. Here. There was a, a few years ago, there was. A few years ago, the town at, at a meeting like this authorized the town to spend up to $40,000 to install a, a solar panels on, and we failed to find a suitable location on town property to do that. And, that's, uh, and we also brought it to a vote to join a remote situation where we would have bought into a, a field out of the town of Rochester, and that was defeated at a special vote. So a couple other hands, really. And John, Susie, did you have a hand up? Did you want to address extra about those addresses? Okay. Uh, this might be more pertinent to the overall budget, so if I'm out of line, just please tell me. Um, one thing that would help us save money is less people suing the town. That'd be a big one. you if there's not if someone else doesn't want to speak for the first time. Anyone else? I thought, I thought we had a rule at the beginning that there were going to be no personal attacks. <laughs> I'll second that. Is that correct? Okay. I did not name any names. I just said you know, the state okay. right. Yeah. Uh, we can start this if we want. Any other discussion? <laughs> call the question. Uh, that's what I was going to say. Okay. <laughs> Questions are called in discussion. All in favor of any discussion, say aye. 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 As opposed to any. Discussion closed. Uh, votes on um, Article 13. Will the voters approve an amount of $15,000 contribute fund funding to continue funding the town buildings and property reserve fund? All in favor say aye. Aye. As opposed to any. Article 13 <coughs> passes. Article 14. Will the voters approve an amount of $1,000 to fund the tennis reserve fund for ongoing and future court maintenance. Move and second. Move Susie, second to the Halina. Discussion? Seeing none, no objections, we'll close discussion. Move to a vote on Article 14. Will the voters approve an amount of $1,000 to fund the tennis reserve fund for ongoing and future court maintenance? All in favor say aye. Aye. Let's close say nay. Ayes have it. Article 14 passes. Article 15 to act to transact any other legal and proper business to be bought before brought before the meeting. Someone move this. Move. 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 Yes. Yes, I have this Rod Lee. I motion that the town of Rochester, starting July 1st, 2018, provide digital video recording of all select board meetings and town meetings only, and those the results of those recordings to be uploaded to the town website. I second that. Okay, so uh, is, is that done <coughs> already? 
This was, um, well, okay. it was just, yeah. Okay, so this isn't binding. It could be a recommendation. Um, no binding business can be done during other uh, during this other business article. Um, but it could it could make a recommendation to the select board that they could take under advisement. So this this topic has come up, and um, you may have noticed the woman over here to my right, and she is. Um, <laughs> She is from Orca Media, as, as Dan um, mentioned earlier, which is a nonprofit um, organization, and their mission is to promote participation in local government for, by providing free video production services in the town served by Orca Media. They're dedicated to the principles of free speech, content neutrality, um, localism, civic engagement, and tolerance of diverse opinions and perspectives. So on the, on the heels of our discussion about saving money for the town, um, the Orca, this is their mission. We are part of the town that they serve. So we, we, we already have this service, so I'm not sure why we should um, pay to double it. I recommend that uh, we start giving Orca some money. Yes. I mean, this isn't a welfare town, is it? I mean, we've got money for everything else. Why don't we uh, record some of our we stuff here? So that in the future, if you want to research something, you can go back and actually find it. You, this is this is already happening. If you want to donate, this is a nonprofit organization. You I can said donate as that. As a town, doomed. The town. So you. As a town, yeah. Okay. Down here and then Frank. The, the Orca Media services are funded by the cable networks and the TV stations that, by agreement with their licensing, put money into a fund for public use. And this is one of those public uses. We are already paying for it. You pay for it in your cable bill. Actually, I raised this at a select board. You the mic there? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I raised this at a select board meeting, and I indicated to do it, and I follow up. We recently had a group of a large group of skiers arrived in electric cars. And from Boston, it's about 165 miles, and their range was 200. So I had the opportunity to find out where all the, all the charging stations in the surrounding towns were located, just to advise them where they could pull off and they could charge. So, uh, so I'd, I'd, I'd like um, a select board to speak about what plans we have for um, having electric, having uh, some kind of electric charging possibilities <laughs> in Rochester. Because I know uh, they happen in Middlebury, they happen in South Wilson, they happen in Waitsfield. It seems like uh, we're missing an opportunity to be attracting people. Uh, returning to the motion, uh, and the discussion of the motion that was made. What was the motion? I'm sorry. Did we the motion? Was it? Uh, we was donate it? five thousand dollars to Orca. So let's be clear about Orca. Orca is a nonprofit that, for example, at the federal level, we may lose those funds very soon. Uh, and that Orca is a nonprofit, and it is not our personal town's best interest. We're talking about storage that's done by our paid employees so that the public will have accurate ability to, uh, to see what's going on in our website, on our website. We can actually download anything that Orca has into our website for our town protection. 
We can't be guaranteed that Orca will be there for us. And this, this is what this is about. This is about where we go in the future with digital recording for all to participate in democracy. Andrea. So uh, one of the things that you can do with website is, websites is that you can link them to other websites. So if that's something that we're interested in, in bringing awareness to local support for local government, then maybe that's something that we can look into instead of actually storing all the videos on the website. And that way, town people can go to the website and then link to Orphan Media and go find those videos. It's my understanding that uh, all of the select board meetings, as well as this meeting, there are um, minutes taken, which are recorded and kept at the town clerk and are accessible to any anyone who wishes to, to access them. Is that the case? They're kept at the town clerks and also hosted uh, posted to the website, the town website. So if we're, if we're concerned about saving money, um, I would like to suggest that that's, we continue reading. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, folks. I'm Spencer Homer. Um, I guess I just have to say that with the age of the internet and where we are now, um, it's good to consider the viewing of websites and also, like, if she says that it's being uploaded to YouTube, that's a commercial for-profit site. And once you put those videos there, you don't really necessarily have the rights to videos anymore, in one sense. Um, the other question is, of course, is as a free and open society, um, how do we protect ourselves against people who, say, are working against the, the virtues and the motives of, say, a nonprofit organization um, that we listed this then? So, you know, how do people in California or do people out of this country need to be seeing what's happening in these town meetings? Because um, I can't see you looking at that camera. And as a point of just having some resistance to just freely giving up our images and what we're saying and our ideas and our identities um, to something that we don't necessarily know. And I think it's really a good idea to also bet this concept of protecting ourselves against um, those who all sort of take things to the internet. So. Hi, I'm Sarah Hoffman. Well, no, I mean, we're, this, is, this is non binding business. We, 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 someone, there's no question. Someone could move your jerk. Do our hands up, Frank. Could you, again, oh, wait, uh, June, I didn't understand. I didn't understand we were carrying on this conversation about Orca. Uh, could you uh, respond about what plans the uh, like what has? Yes. For, um, there, the. The immediate plans on on the drawing boards is would be the the next stage of development of the park and ride, which is across from the fire station north of town on the north end of town. And there is the next phase would be to um, get a grant for electrical uh, vehicle charging station there. So that that is in the plans. I can't tell you when that's going to happen, but that's it's it's coming. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to say you know, this is non-binding uh, business in this article, but we can or you can um, make a recommendation. The assembly can make a recommendation to to the board if you did want to uh, move to have a recommendation to do X, Y, or Z. Um, we could discuss it and. We could vote on it to see, to, to show the select board how how the town felt about something like that. We can do this, but it's not binding. They don't have to do it if you vote yes. I can, 
I can talk pretty loud. Um, people may not know that with EC Fiber uh, putting a cable throughout our town, that I believe EC Fiber is mandated by federal law to put on all the town, uh, local towns, meetings, as well as all their activities. And that should be free because they're paying a franchise fee to put that cable throughout our town. So we should check into that because I'm sure there's mandates that they have to accomplish for all of us. John's had a chance. Um, right behind you, Chris. Maybe his first time. Yeah, Other behind you. I don't even really want the microphone. So, uh, Chris Patrick, I, I guess my recommendation to the board would be: you know, we voted on Article Nine, which included all of the dollar amounts in Article Ten through Fourteen. Therefore, when we passed Article Nine, we actually passed Article Ten through Fourteen already. It just seems odd to pass the budget and then from it if we don't pass one of the subsequent articles. So maybe next year, like rearranging the sequence of the articles, um, that's how I understood what Joanne described what we did. I'm not sure if that's correct or not, but it seems kind of backwards the way it was described. Becky, do you want to respond to that? Becky? The Article 9 is for the general budget and the highway budget. Right. The Article 9 is for the general town fund budget and the highway budget, but we added to that those budgets with these following articles. So then that means the amount to be raised by taxes goes up. It's been this way every year. We, that's how we do it every year. So, right. So, so I had that backwards. Go ahead, Alan. Get this clarified. Come back. So that goes back to my original question when you were doing this: amount to be raised by taxes has to be the general budget plus all the appropriations yes. that you're making. Yes. So then you have to delay that vote on that amount to be raised by taxes until you have passed everything in the appropriations to have a final figure that everybody votes <coughs> on to be raised by taxes. So you're saying vote the total budget after you go through after you vote and the appropriations. Yes, and that makes sense. I would like to make a uh, recommendation that the uh, town budget figures be voted after the appropriation figures are voted upon. Just, just to make, uh, I'd like to have a total figure that we are paying that's to be raised by taxes. Eight hundred ninety-one thousand three hundred twenty-seven. Is that what you've got, Nancy? Yes. Yes. Page forty-eight. Page forty-eight. Okay. We vote on the. General budget, the highway budget. After that, we add the appropriations and we add the uh, transfers to, to the reserves. That's right. <coughs> okay, so you're telling us that Article 9 was not the full budget. These 10, 10 11, 12, 13, 14 were not included. Get added to okay. the one million sixty-one thousand. Okay, and page 48 is the, is the final number with all of those. Um, John. Uh, uh, just a second, John, I'm sorry. Uh, Nancy, did you say what you needed to say there? Just the page number? Is that what you were? Page 48. Yeah. That's all you needed? Your hand is up? Yes. Okay. Uh, this is appropriate. I'd like to speak uh, as a town representative to UC Fiber. Uh, after 
think I've been on the board for a couple of years now. Uh, and I, I, after apologizing for how slow things are, uh, I'm pleased to say that this year, every home in Rochester, by the end of the year, ought to be able to have IC internet service over fiber optic cable. It's considerably better than anything anybody can see in town, as far as I understand it. Uh, I want to thank everyone for their patience. Uh, we've worked hard at this. This is a multi, multi million dollar project that we're doing. We're going to spend just a couple of million dollars just in Rochester to get cable all the way up to the hollows. I'd like to say that if you want it, you should get in touch with BC Fiber. There's a contact number in the paper in the uh, town report. And let them know that you want service to your house so that when the cables are brought up on all the side roads, you will be on their list of people they will contact and you'll be that much sooner to get service. Uh, I have to say that as a board member, we deal with the big stuff. If you, but if you do have a question, get in touch with me. I may have to get back to you on some of the details. But uh, I say I thank everybody for their patience, and I hope you do sign up. Uh, one other thing is to go to a very seasonal place. If you do want to have cable service to your house and you want it run underground, as some people don't like to have cables to their homes, you will have to, over this summer, get in touch with a contractor to lay a new conduit, a pipe underground from the pole to your home. You see Fiber will give you guidance on that. Uh, but you can't do it once the ground freezes again. And a lot of the service may not go in until after that point. So if you do want to have underground service to your home, you need to contact EC Fiber and probably arrange for a private contractor, which they may be able to help you find to get that service. Uh, again, this, we have one other point, I think it's in the thing. The town does not support us other than once you uh, sign up for service, you will be paying a fee, but we are uh, an independent company. And uh, like said, we appreciate the support people have given us in the past. And, uh, Please to say we're finally going to have service this year. Thank you. 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 Thank you.